वेलकम टू लेक्चर ट्वेंटी वन ऑन स्टोकास्टिक प्रोसेसेस इन लेक्चर ट्वेंटी वी हैव सीन द स्पेक्ट्रल डिकम्पोजिशन थ्योरम इन विच वी हैड ए मेट्रिक्स एंड दिस ए मेट्रिक्स वॉज रियल एंड स्क्वायर देन वी हैव शोन दैट इफ एक्स वन एक्स टू एंड एक्स एन दिस वॉज एन वाई एन मेट्रिक्स If x1, x2, xn, they are right eigenvectors, right eigenvectors, and the corresponding eigenvalues are lambda one, lambda two, lambda n, and y1, y2, y n. If they are, they were uh, left uh, eigenvectors corresponding to these uh, eigenvalues, and if uh, H contains uh, these eigenvectors as a column. Vectors and k contains these eigenvectors. Then we have this result that a is equals to h lambda h inverse, where lambda is a diagonal matrix containing diagonal elements lambda one, lambda two, lambda n. And we can write down a is equals to k transpose inverse lambda k transpose. And we have also seen that a to the power n. Is nothing but h times lambda to the power n h inverse, which is very easy to find. <coughs> Excuse me. And a to the power n is k transpose inverse lambda to the power n k transpose. So this result we have seen. And uh, in addition to this, uh, if we consider that these x one, x two, x n, and y one, y two, y n, they are this way. That means they are orthonormal, mutually orthonormal to each other. That means y j transpose x i is one if x and uh, if i and j are same. If and it is zero if i, I and uh, j are different. So in that case, this condition holds that h k k transpose h is identity matrix. And then we can write down h inverse is equals to k transpose. And ultimately we will. Have this result that a is equals to h lambda k transpose, and this is known as spectral decomposition of a. And using this result, we can find out that a to the power n is nothing but h times lambda to the power n k transpose. So, if you write down this result further. And if we we expand this by multiplication, so this these things I have seen, so I am just recalling those things. So we will get this way: a to the power n is summation i from one to n lambda i to the power n x i y i transpose. Now see x i is your n by one vector, and y i transpose is your n by one one by n vector. So you will get n by n matrix. Okay, that means these are n by n matrices, and you are adding them, so you will get a to the power n as n by n matrices. So this way, uh, uh, we can find out the value of a to the power n if we know the eigen values, right eigen vectors and left eigen vectors, and at the same time, if these eigen vectors are mutually orthonormal. That means this y i transpose x i. Is zero or one accordingly if i and j are different and i and j are same. So, uh, uh, but if this y i transpose x i is not one, it is c i for example, then we have to just normalize it and we have to divide it by c i. So, c i inverse will be uh, additional thing which we will have. So, a to the power n will be summation i from one to n lambda i to the power n. C i inverse x i y i transpose. Now we will see in today's example the application of uh, this uh, theorem. That means we will uh, with the with the uh, example we will see how to find p to the power n using this uh, result. So uh, I'll uh, take one example. P is equals to one minus a a b one minus b. So this uh, just consider that we have a two state Markov chain, and uh, the one step transition probability is given by this matrix, where A and B both are between zero and one. Now, uh, how to find uh, 
this p to the power n. So this is two by two matrix. Uh, matrix. First, uh, we will find out the uh, eigen values. So step step one is find the eigen values of p by solving the equation determinant of p minus lambda i is equals to zero. So we have to solve this equation. Okay. So what is this? P minus lambda i determinant of that is equals to zero. That means one minus a minus lambda rho is a b 1 minus b minus lambda determinant is equals to 0 so when you solve it so uh, you will have this result and ultimately we will have two roots lambda 1 is equals to 1 and lambda 2 is equals to 1 minus a minus b so we will have two eigen values and we can see that they are different, they are distinct eigenvalues. So now, what is the next step? Next step is, we have to find the values of x1, x2, xn. Here, the matrix is 2 by 2. So we will find x1 and x2 only. That means the right vectors. So step 2 is find the right vectors. So let x1 is equals to column wise x11 and x12 and x2 is equals to column wise x21 and x22 be the right eigenvectors corresponding to lambda 1 is equals to 1 and lambda 2 is equals to 1 minus a minus b respectively. That means x1 is uh, right eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1, x2 is right eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2. So how to find right eigenvectors? We know the right eigenvector satisfy this equation that p x1 is equals to lambda 1 x1. So we have to just uh, solve this equation. And uh, after solving, we will get the values of x1. Similarly, we will solve uh, px2, which is uh, px2 is equals to lambda 2x2. And after solving this, we will have the value of x2. So, what is p? p is 1 minus a, uh, a, b, 1 minus b. And x1, we have considered this vector. And what is lambda 1? Lambda 1 is 1. And this x1. So now you can see that this is nothing but uh, system of linear equations containing two equations. So this is your first equation. This is your second equation. You just uh, write down these equations. But if you uh, simplify these equations, you will have these two things. Now from these two things, you can easily see that x11 is nothing but x12. That means uh, we are having uh, many vectors. They are not getting single uh, one vector because whenever you choose x11 by a constant, then x12 will be that constant. So here we are taking uh, on taking, uh, I have written here uh, on taking x11 is equals to 1. Okay. So that was missed somehow. So x11, if you take 1, then uh, your vector will be. 1 1. So, this is your first vector, first eigen, right eigenvector. Similarly, if we solve this equation, you will have these two equations and on solving these two equations, simplifying you will get these and this will be the result. So, I, I am not going into details of these calculations because uh, uh, I hope that these are straightforward calculations and you will be able to do these things. So what we are getting, we are getting that x22 is equals to minus b by a x21. Now if uh, here I am taking x21 is equals to a, okay. So x21 is equals to a we are getting. So if you put a here, x22 will be minus b. So this is the second eigen vector, second right eigen vector. So now we have two right eigen vectors. Now the third step we will find out left eigenvectors similarly. So now what is left? Uh, let y1, y2, these are left eigenvectors corresponding to lambda 1 and lambda 2. Now left eigenvector satisfy this equation that y1 transpose p is equals to lambda 1 y1 transpose and y2 transpose p is equals to lambda 2 y2 transpose. Now you write down uh, those equations, remember that y1 transpose will be rho vector. 
So now if you solve these things, you will get these two equations and if you simplify, you will get these two equations and after solving these equations, we will get y12 is equal to a divided by b y11. Now if I consider y11 is equal to b, then y12 will be a. So this will be the first left, eigen, uh, left uh, eigenvector. Similarly, you can find out y2 which is uh, we are getting 1 minus 1 <coughs> and this is the second left eigenvector. Now we will verify whether these uh, xi's and yi's are mutually orthonormal or not. So we will see that by finding the values of yj transpose xi. So this is the step 4. You find the values of yj transpose xi. So y1 transpose x1, y1 transpose x2, y2 transpose x1 and y2 transpose x2. So y1 transpose x1 we are getting b plus a, y1 transpose x2 we are getting 0, y2 transpose x1 we are getting 0, y2 transpose x2 we are getting a plus b. So now you can see that this uh, c1 is a plus b and this condition implies that y1 and x2 are orthogonal are orthogonal and y2 and x1 are orthogonal and c2 is equal to the, the a plus b. Now there is nothing more because uh, now the la last step is step 5 in which we use the spectral decomposition uh, theorem to calculate p to the power n. So remember that p to the power n is summation i from 1 to n capital N where capital N is 2 lambda i to the power n c i inverse x i y i transpose. That means now we have lambda 1 to the power n c 1 inverse x 1 inverse x 1 y 1 transpose lambda to the power n c 2 inverse x 2 y 2 transpose. When you put these values lambda 1 is 1 c 1 inverse that means 1 divided by a plus b x 1 is 1 1 y 1 transpose is b a lambda 2 to the power n is this c2 inverse is this and this is x2 and this is y2 transpose. Now on, cal on simplifying these things you will get this uh, p to the power n. So we are getting this p to the power n. If you add them you will have the matrix single. Now if uh, one wants to know what is the value of limit n tending to infinite p to the power n, it is easy to see that there is no n in this part. So that part will be as it is. Okay. Now, in this part, you have 1 minus a minus b to the power n, okay, here. Now, remember that this uh, a and b, they are between 0 and 1. Then you can verify easily that 1 minus a minus b will be between minus 1 to plus 1. That you can verify. So, this uh, uh, limit, n tending to infinite, that will be 0. So, therefore, we are getting this only. So, uh, we have seen that how to find uh, p to the power n. So, step 1 is you just find out uh, eigenvalues. Then step 2, find out the right eigenvectors. Then step 3, find out left eigenvectors. Step 4, find out uh, whether those vectors are usually orthonormal or not. And then in step 5, you use uh, spectral decomposition theorem to calculate the value of p to the power n. So, uh, you try uh, other matrices uh, uh, to solve uh, uh, this uh, p to the power n and I uh, will stop here. Uh, in next lecture, we will discuss uh, Gambler's Rune problem. Thank you for watching this uh, video.